Six Hour P322 Romeo Zero Elite Package. The P322 itself features Ambi Slide Stop Release, Ambi Safety, and a mag release configurable for either left or right hand use. Swapping the mag release is extremely awkward. The Romeo Zero Red Dot is a challenge to change the brightness setting. Actually, it's a real pain. The Romeo Zero is assembled in the USA. Is this weasel talk for a gain of function collusion made in China optic? And we just snapped a few pieces together on US soil? The P322 splits the difference between being a trainer for a P320 and the P365 versus being fully optimized as a standalone 22 lr defense carry pistol. Despite being larger and heavier than the Caltech P17, the P322's 20 round magazine capacity puts its rounds per size and weight score very close to the P17. See the AMGUN pistol rounds per size and weight spreadsheet, link in the description. The P322's conventional construction does inspire a bit more confidence and is more satisfying to fondle than the P17, but you can buy two P17s for the price of one iron sighted P322. There is no rear iron sight filler plate included with the P322 Romeo Zero Elite Optics package, so if you decide that red dots aren't for you, you'll have to order a rear sight filler plate, 50 bucks. The plastic rear sight optics plate should be included. $50 is pricey even for SIG. I recommend buying the P322 without the Romeo Zero Red Dot and mounting a shield red dot, either the RMSC or SMSC. That way you get a free world NATO Ally red dot and the filler plate. The P322, unlike the 365XL, features a standard accessory rail compatible with my beloved Mantis X. You can use the included P322 chamber flag to dry fire your pistol. Terrific grippy slide serrations. Front serrations are properly placed for a press check. Slide is so easy to operate that you can press check to slide lock. Grip ratio is 1.65 which is roundish compared to the narrow P17 grip. This will make the P322 a bit more challenging to index for point shooting. My Mantis X scores with the P322 run about the same as the P365XL, both a few points down from the P17. The P322, as hypothesized, is hampered most on one-handed point shooting drills. I found the P322 not quite as reliable as my P17s. I get occasional light strikes, particularly with Aguila bulk ammo. Weird live cartridge stove pipes with federal punch. Probably a failure on my part to properly load the mag. The occasional standard empty cartridge stove pipe with other brands of ammo. In my testing, often dual wielding with the P17, the P322 suffers two times as many malfunctions as the Caltech Red Dot P17 setup, and three times as many mouths as the P17 standard slide. But while the P17 handles a variety of ammo better than the P322, I found the P322 very reliable, in fact equally as reliable as the P17 when using CCI 40 grain mini mag. So far, zero malfunctions for either pistol. Magazine buttons. I do also get the occasional accidental disengagement of the 322 magazine. Not the kind of thing that happens at the range, but rather when wearing the pistol in the field, bumping into trees, crawling on the ground, grazing a fence post, or falling off my mountain bike. I have yet to experience an accidental magazine disengagement with the P-17's paddle mag release, hence my huge preference for the paddle magazine release. I still prefer the P-17 for EDC, yes, even over my 9's, see how the 22 wins, link in the description, but I do very much like the P-322. I think for backcountry use carried in my Hill People chest pack where the added bulk and width isn't wrecking my inside the waistband belt line, 
I might go with the P322 over the P17 for those extra four rounds on tap, but that's only because I have a P322 in my stable. Otherwise, I'd just rather stick with the P17. Loading the magazines, the P17 requires less focus. The P322 demands careful attention to making sure the cartridges are properly stacked. Some gun tubers have stories of heavy leading of the barrel and some rather disappointing customer service experiences with SIG. However, with about a thousand rounds fired of mostly premium ammo, I've had no leading issues. I wonder if heating up the barrel with a mag dump helps to clear out any leading, as I do that on occasion. Or maybe I just got cleanly cut rifling in my barrel. If the P322 featured a paddle mag release, ambi, and to prevent accidental disengagement, and if it were a bit thinner, and had a higher grip ratio, I would warm up to the P322 more, but as things stand, I prefer the P17 over the P322. In fact, at some point, I'll probably sell my P322 and buy a couple more P17s. But, if I were terribly allergic to Caltech products, I'd be quite happy with the P322. And for those who EDC a P365 or P320, the P322 is a great rimfire practice platform for the cinefire obsessed. Overall, I like the P322.